what I'm going to do is I take a little bit of white grease like that and in this lip seal here I'm going to kind of put some of that grease around in there kind of pack that with grease uh, grease is a very good lubricant for rubber it works a little better than oil maybe smear a little bit on here too put that on there like so it's a little tight there we go <clears throat> and uh, then I gotta do the same for the other side yeah that's good perfect The other thing I was going to mention is there's little uh, little relief put in this edge. You'll see it several places here where there was an O-ring. The O-rings are there to prevent the bearing from spinning in there. It's just to kind of lock in the, the OD of the bearing because you can't make the OD of the bearing too tight on account of this piece is aluminum this piece is steel. This is going to expand a lot over a distance that much. It could expand and contract ten thousandths probably pretty easy. Uh, so therefore you need something with a little give in so that the the crankcase can expand when it gets warm and contract uh, and yet still you don't want the bearings to spin. So that's I think the idea of the of the O-rings in there. So uh, but the point I was trying to make, I'm going to set that down in there. I guess you can see what I did there. And uh, the point I was trying to make was there's a little bit of relief where these rubber seals are. And that was just done by hand. When you look at it, you'll see they're all different depths and everything. Somebody went along before they assembled it and, and uh, used a... A little Dremel tool, a little hand grinder to relieve that right there because the when you the halves come together on the crankcase, it's going to bunch up that rubber, you know, kind of squish it up and it'd make a little little bulge right there. So that's why they relieved it. And I'm going to use this stuff here. It's called Yama Bond. That's usually what I use. It's a black stuff. And oh, this is kind of gray. I forget. Okay but I'm going to smear a little bit of this real thin between these case halves before I put the screws together. I've got my screws all sorted out there and uh, you have to watch them because there's different lengths go in different holes but I've got that all done so uh, now it's just a matter of putting this stuff on. Uh, like to give you an idea of the cost of new bearings, these here on this end were uh, $28.36 each. Now that's buying them from a bearing supply shop. Now this here, I usually put it on with my fingers. You can see it's it's almost like silicone sealant but much thinner. And uh, I don't I don't like the just plain using plain silicone sealant. I mean they, they have it but uh, I think this is better when you're in you're putting together case halves like that because it's so thin that it it really will squeeze down because you don't want to have anything holding open you don't want something like a gasket in here that's that's not what this is for because they have to come together to hold those bearings right in there so and when it was machined these two these two uh, halves were bolted together and then they machined you know bored the hole through the center of them exactly on center and that's how they make the cases. So the cases are matched. You can't switch one ha case half with another one. I see people sometimes selling them that way on eBay and that's the idiot that buys it. He's the one that ought to know better that that's no good. But uh, it's a match set.
I'm putting a little bit of blue Loctite on these threads here. Not so much that I think this thing could possibly vibrate apart, but it does kind of seal the threads so they don't get so rusty. I have cleaned out, tapped all the holes, so. Okay, when I go to tighten these two halves together, I want to kind of cross tighten them, just like you'd do if you were doing a cylinder head or something. So you snug it a little bit here, another one over here, kind of cross tighten them. Sometimes a manual will give you a, a pattern that they recommend for putting them together. Probably what they tell the guy at the factory working as to how to tighten them. But of course I want to do these ones in the center and then work my way out. Uh, that's because, you know, it's, it's kind of like putting together something that you don't want to wrinkle up or something. It's a, you're trying to get those two plates to draw down without any stress between them. And I always tighten them quite, you know, just just hand tight, just just snug a little bit, so things can still move. If something, if I was tightening, you wouldn't want to tighten these all the way down on one time. You want just hand tight, snug, and then go back around and do the same thing again, make them a little bit tighter, and then maybe even go around a third time to make sure they're at the torque you want. Anyways, I guess this is getting a little boring.